This conference will now be recorded. Okay, it's 6 p.m. on March 4th, 2021, and this is Bill O'Brien, Ninth District Councilman and Chairman of the Parks Rec Committee, and we'll call the meeting to order right at 6 p.m. Do we have a motion to approve the minutes of February 4th? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Thanks, Paul. Have a second? Sure, I'll second it. Is that Gary? Yep, yes. Thanks, Gary. Any uh, discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you, passes unanimously. And the report of the Park Superintendent, Chad. Hello, oh, good evening. Chad Esposito, Park Superintendent for the Town of Stratford. Um, February was a crazy month with 30 inches of snow. So basically the whole public works division was just concentrating on snow removal, uh, schools, buildings, sidewalks, crosswalks, bus stops and parks, parks, um, all of that stuff. So we were pretty, comp you know, pretty busy in that respect. We didn't really do much on the outside in the parks, um, you know, in new business, I mean, March is here and everything is just going to be geared going towards by the next meeting will be you know high school sports start spring sports start everything like that so we're deep in right now trying to get everything ready for the spring hey chad i want to this is bill o'brien i want to add discussing the snow removal even chad was out there shoveling one day at the future home of the museum uh the veterans museum at booth park thanks chad you got it i mean it was it was rough <laughs> it was a lot of compacted storms so Trying to get guys to work. Guys were tired after working 40, 42 hours. It was it was a long Sunday, that one storm. So <laughs> I think we got out at Wednesday afternoon or something like that. Um, so yeah, that's a quick report, just a synopsis on the parks. Um, I know we're gonna be talking about Longbrook tennis. I don't know if you want me to go into that now or if anybody has any questions for me, I'd be happy to, you know. Chet, what's the uh, plan for the golf course as far as opening goes? I was gonna wait until new business for that. But um, okay, okay. The, uh, I could say it now. I mean, we were down there yesterday, Pete and myself walking the course. It's still very, very wet on like four, five in that range, six area. So we're, we're gonna reevaluate the course. Bobby, the greens are all dry. Um, there's tons of ball marks on them. People are playing, people are hitting to them. So, which is kind of discouraging. So Bobby was out fixing ball marks that shouldn't be. Uh, but Bobby's going to do a little bit. He's going to go after, he's going to target the mold. No, not the mold, uh, the moss. He's going to go after the moss either tomorrow. He was supposed to do it either today or tomorrow. And then Tuesday, we're, we ordered sand, got sand delivered today. So we're going to tap just the greens one more time early next week. And then we're going to reevaluate the course and possibly open for March 15th. But uh, I'm going to hold that close to the vest and see how you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday goes because it's supposed to be a little bit cold next week with on Wednesday. So we'll see how the course is looking. And if we could open, we can open. Hey, Chad. Hmm. Yes. Uh, it's supposed to be like in the upper 50s at the end of next week. Is there a way we can keep people off the course until it officially opens? Uh, it's kind of hard to do when Bobby's there during the day. Yes, when after hours, um, I could have my second shift kind of patrol the area and make sure nobody's on it. But if somebody's in the middle of the course, it would be hard to remove them. So we're we're playing it day by day and we're seeing how the course is. If we could open, that would be the best case scenario that we just open for golf so that we start collecting, you know, greens fees. So we're taking it, we're taking everything into consideration. Hopefully that everything points the direction. Uh, Pete's ready to go. We have a couple other staff that are ready to go. So at a moment's notice, we could change. So you could open next week if the course is ready and it is warm enough then. Oh yeah, we're we're ready. We have another meeting tomorrow where we're going to go over logistics in that respect. But uh, yeah, we're we're we can open. We're ready to open. You know, Bobby's got all the cups. He's got the dual flags. He's uh, getting T markers. He ordered. Uh, Another set of yellow tee markers that we're gonna put in fairways for junior or kids kind of golfers. 
and create a different scorecard for kids golfers with different yardages. So it'll be interesting for little kids to have their own scorecard and have their own kind of course to play uh, rather than playing from the adults and trying to get to the green. So Pete's going to work on that respect with myself on setup and where we're going to put it. And that's kind of, you know, going towards the opening April, May, uh, we're going to work on that stuff. I like that, Chad. I've seen that at other courses where they have they even called it a family tee, which is, makes it more fun for the uh, younger kids. That's a good idea, Bill, because, you know, there's people, there's some parents who maybe want to hit from them, work on short game, or maybe they don't play golf. So that's a good idea. I'll mention it to Pete, maybe a family tee or a community tee or something like that. Actually, it makes me even think about my mother when she was 90 still playing golf, and it would have been ideal for her. And Paul, Paul Hoytick, if you've seen him, it, it, he probably should play from there, too. <laughs> uh, couldn't resist it, Paul. Yeah, that's okay, Bill. <laughs> I, I know how it gets when you're approaching your mother's age. <laughs> oh, shoot. <laughs> Uh, all right thanks chad you want to talk about the tennis courts because that's a big topic for, for tonight it's um did everybody get the um the drawings that yeah yeah it was on yep. and i yeah, think it so makes I sense really chad what you said about the option number one i think it was yeah i, I presented last night to uh longbrook park uh, longbrook park commission um, the proposals and the, you know, the draft drawings and the layouts. And, you know, I explained that, you know, we kind of looked at the two drawings or the two conceptuals between myself, Brian Snyder and Milo McBroom, um, the engineer from them, you know, we kind of looked, they took input from the area, from the surroundings, from the terrain, my input. Um, so the first two or two and three, basically that run parallel with Prim Street have either massive amounts of trees that come down. Um, if you move closest to Glendale, then you kind of lose that front area parking that for events and for the, the Thanksgiving Day game, you're losing up parking where if you go to option number one, that doesn't really take away from any parking. It doesn't, it does the least, it does the least environmental impact as far as trees coming down. Um, yes, the batting cage has to be picked up and relocated to the west side of the building somewhere. Um, I talked with Tony D'Angelo, you know, from Stratford High. He has no problem moving it on that side of the field house. It's not a concern for him. He's he's happy with it. Um, so with that cost, is going to be significantly less that if we go from the existing court and then parallel up, um, there's a couple things going on. We would have to move the paddle courts, which basically is buying a new paddle court at that point because it's it's severely expensive to just move it. You can't reuse everything. It's got to be redone, um, that kind of stuff. And then as you go up one section of tennis courts, the hill on the right-hand side as you get closest to the street is all ledge. So all that ledge would have had to been taken back going towards the street which would have incurred more costs to try and put them parallel with Pym Street. So this was the best you know, alternative solution that they're side by side. Yes, it's a little bit behind the field house and stuff like that, but it's gonna be a big enough structure that you know, it, it's gonna be prominent, that um, you know, they're a little bit staggered so that it, it gives a little room between the building and the court. Uh, the first court goes exactly where the court is now. And then the second court kind of offshoots that there'll be a fence in between two courts and two courts, uh, but out over those two courts, there'll be walkthrough paths so you could get access to the whole thing. Chad, did you get any um, estimates on cost yet or not? No, because we, we, we wanted to settle on a draft first. Now from the draft, if everybody agrees, option one is the way. Now they'll start put it into you know bid type format where they'll get estimated costs, what has to be done. Um, you know we were we were lucky in our first sets. You know both at Benal and Flood, uh, and actually Clover where we did the post tension basketball. We've done them on existing asphalt courts. Um, so the asphalt was there. They lay the post tension. It floats on the asphalt, and there was no site work done. This is a little bit different. You can't float the you know the courts. 
on the by the you know the clay so that has to be changed as well as the new court has to be dug out and all that stuff so with that there's the construction there's you know renovation there's different things that have to happen um, that you know the engineering has to put together and put together all the cost estimates plus a brand new fence too right yes brand new fence on both courts yeah you can't you really can't reuse it because actually flood and banal the way that they do post tension courts now about five six years later is actually even a different process they've learned on what works and what doesn't they've changed like the curbing a little bit the edging uh, so even the newest court that we're going to get is different than Benel and Flood. Here. Rick, Mark, can you mute yourself, please? Thank you. And then, Chad, when we get the um, estimates, too, we're going get, to get it with lights and without lights, right? Yeah, I would imagine that the engineers would build in add alternates for lights, no lights, um, that kind of stuff. Absolutely. Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, Ken. Yes, I'd like to make a motion and then we could have a further discussion if that's all right with you. Okay. All right, so I'd like to make a motion to uh, accept option one for the Longbrook tennis courts and forward it to the town council with a favorable recommendation uh, with the project proceeding based on available appropriations. Do we have a second? A second. Who is that, Paul? Yes. Thank you. Any uh, further discussion? Well, one question I have, Chad, I, I guess um, it won't be a north-south, right, uh, layout? No. Uh, the north-south or parallel would not really – I mean, you could put it, but it would be uh, – you would either have to put it very close to Glendale to stay away from the rocks and not move the paddle tennis courts yes. or go the east-west or side-by-side -side location so that – you know, you're doing the least environmental damage, the least around of tree removals, um, that kind of stuff. So you're kind of keeping the trees in stack. If uh, we were going to a light type option, it will help flood um, or keep the light where it is. Although if it would be all LEDs, we know how concise and precise those lights are. So, you know, it, it's um, the way that it is, it fits the terrain very, very well. Yeah. I just um, concerned about the the sun, especially for high school matches in the afternoon. There's no way they can s switch flip them the other way. Uh, I mean, we could ask them to do a cost analysis, uh, but moving the paddle tennis courts and removing the ledge uh, could be quite expensive. Um, I could have them do that. I mean, so that we have both numbers. Um, in front of us, you know, that's that's where they're for. No, I'm just wondering if the, with the current option, well, there's no way they can, it won't fit to turn them. No. Yeah. No, because if you turn them, then you would just do the north-south region, like closest to Glendale, and use the open grass area, you know, on the right of the field house as you look at it. Because if you go on the other side, then the paddle courts have to be moved. The electric for the paddle courts has to be removed or moved. Um, the rock has to be removed or it has to be staggered inwards, uh, which takes more trees down on the other side. Um, it, it really is a, a very comprehensive layout when you do it in parallel or front to back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just wondering, I, I know north-south is the yeah. typical orientation for tennis courts. Do we need to get the opinion of some tennis people? Is this going to be a problem for the, for the schools? I hope not, but... I'll talk to the engineers about it and ask them. That's not a problem. Which no way problem. are they aligned now? Uh, I would have to look on a map. I'm not sure which way it's oriented. Um, maybe it's on the...
It looks like they are north south. Yeah, they are they are north south facing. They are north south facing, Bill. It's just they're side by side. Okay. Oh good. Okay. I guess I'm looking at it wrong here. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be too hard yeah. to just It'd be too hard to just rotate them because it's not a square, it's a rectangle. So that would, it really wouldn't work. Oh, there's a word Ken likes, rectangle fields. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the orientation is correct. Yep, they did it that way. Yep. Oh, good, good. That was the existing court, which must have been that way, built that way, you know, however, when that court was constructed, the clay court. That's right. Yeah, it was. Okay. All right, uh, thanks. If there's uh, no more discussion, want to vote on this? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, thank you. So uh, Aileen will send that to the council. Anything else, Chad, or anybody else have any questions for Chad and anything else? Uh, did you did you want to wait before you go to council with an estimated cost, or did you want to present it as is with available no, just, funds? The way um, Ken worded it, I think is yes. uh, is perfect. Okay, you got it. You know, proceeding based on available appropriations. I think that covers it. This is Aileen Marsh speaking. If you guys, if you're not talking, if you could just mute yourself so there's not a lot of background, please. Thank you. And you, Paul Hoydick. I was waiting for you to catch me in. Chad, were you able to talk to Renee about the uh, request for no dogs allowed at Bunnell for signs? I did not. I will put that on my list. I'll talk to her tomorrow. No problem. You got it. Thanks. Okay, if there's nothing else, I guess we can go on to the uh, Amy Norris report. Hey, guys. Sorry if you, uh, there's a, uh, the boys basketball game is on uh, Facebook Live, so I have some guests here. We're watching the game. So if you hear any yelling in the background. Um, so to start the uh, March report, spring programs are starting in two weeks, March 15th, the week of March 15th. We've started um, registering people on a uh, rec desk. We're, you know, moving along pretty good. We're doing a, a basketball at Short Beach, a soccer program, a football program. Uh, track and field all at Longbrook Park. Uh, there will be an archery program at Roosevelt Forest, and they, it will be a golf program that is going to be run by um, Peter over at the golf course, which we are promoting for him as well. Our um, after-school program is going to be ending in the next couple weeks. It you know, was very low enrollment, obviously, this year with everything going on. Um, El Grasso Pool is still open Monday through Friday uh, for swims. Um, pickleball ten and paddleball tennis rental uh, res reservations are still moving along, going pretty well. Haven't heard any complaints. Uh, summer programs, we're in the process of firming up our summer camp flyer uh, and all our summer programs as well. I'm planning to hopefully release that in the next couple of weeks with uh, an April start date for people registering. We like to register a little later to give Sterling House and the Y time to get all their people in and registered. Um, you know, we don't want to steal their thunder there. Um, we will be doing a men's softball league this year. Um, Bill Curley and Ed Sulik have stepped up and they're going to be running the men's softball league. Um, I've reached out to all the teams who were registered two years ago because we had nobody last year. Uh, and heard back from, I'd say, about 10 teams that are interested. So we had talked last time about maxing it out at 12 teams. 
We weren't out more than two days a week. Um, if we get a lot of folks who want to continue, um, you know, we can consider having it one another day to add more teams. But at this point, we're planning on holding at 12 teams. Uh, summer concerts are getting booked. Ed Sulik is my guy booking summer concerts. He has almost all the days booked except for maybe two or three openings left. Uh, we're moving along with that. Um, lifeguards, we are going to be recertifying um, all of our lifeguards this year. There's, I think there's only like two or three whose certification isn't expired because we haven't been able to run any lifeguarding programs uh, with COVID, but they are allowing us now. So uh, Catherine, my waterfront director, is going to be running a program in March and then another one in May to recertify all my lifeguards. Um, anybody have any questions on that before I move on? Okay, um, beach stickers. So this year is a new year for beach stickers. Um, we are still trying to figure out what we're gonna do about getting stickers to residents, uh, those who don't get them in their tax bill. Um, you know, with bird's eye being open for COVID vaccinations, uh, at this point, two days a week, there's some discussion as to whether that's going to go more than two days a week, perhaps less than two days a week. There's a lot of things uh, open on that, so we don't know, but we have a plan, a backup plan, and a triple backup plan, uh, depending on how things go. So hopefully we will uh, be able to figure that out. Um, one of the things new that we're doing this year that we didn't do previous is we used to give you your first lost beach sticker for free. Um, and this year, where if you lost your sticker, you will be charged five dollars. Um, and we do keep track in our office. Um, the tax department sends us this long, very long list with everybody's car that's registered and that has paid taxes in Stratford. And when someone comes in, we we look up their name, we make sure it's the same car, um, same registration, and all that stuff before we give them a sticker. And all those people should have gotten it in the mail. Um, if they lost it, they lost it. Uh, let's see. Um, I am planning that we will be charging at the beaches this year. I have not heard one way or the other, but I figure we're better to be prepared that we will get ch be charging. And then if we don't, we don't. Um, but at this point I'm prepared for us to start our first year with the Monday through Thursday, $20 and then Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and and holidays, $40. Um, were, someone have a question? No, okay. Um, um, I actually did, Amy. This is Bob Jekyll. Hi, Bob um, Jekyll. Can you hear me? I can. Hi, how are you? I have to have a quick question for you about the beaches and charging because it's, you know, obviously would come up in our commission as well. Is Stratford's beaches currently still, I know it's off season, but is it currently supposed to be residents only or are we planning on it's going to be open to everybody once it warms up in a couple months? Uh, I, like I said, I have not heard. Um, at this point, we start manning the beaches um, Memorial Day weekend, the Friday of Memorial Day weekend. So as of now, the beaches are open. Anybody can drive in, drive out. There's nobody guarding the shack or anything. But I am planning that we will be checking for residency and charging non-residents to come to the beach. That's what I'm planning. No one has told me either way, but I figure it's easier to, to be prepared to charge and then to not charge than it is to go the other direction. But I am going on the, with everything opening up now and the governor opening up and restrictions getting lighter that we will be going back that way. But I have not heard, I'm just guessing. Okay, appreciate it, thank you. No problem. Um, jobs, we are, uh, summer jobs have been posted. We are really bombarded with um, applications for summer jobs. Um, we did some math today, Andre and I, and we feel that we could probably hire about 110 people between the beaches, the playgrounds, and all the camps. Um, but we probably are going to get a lot more applications than we have positions. We have a lot of returning people, which is great. Uh, but we're going to do our best to, uh, hire as many as we can, um, but I think we're around 110 total that we'll be hiring for the summer. We also are going back this year to having volunteers. Last year with COVID, we did not allow volunteers, so we have started interviews on um, volunteers, 
So that's happening. If you guys have anybody who wants to volunteer, they can uh, you know, get the application online and send it off to Andre Brown. Um, summer jobs, we're gonna be starting interviews in the next week. So uh, if anybody um, has anybody, they should get that application in like imminently. Because once we fill, we fill. Um, as far as use of property and upcoming events, the Shakespeare market's been going pretty well. And this weekend is a uh, 5K run up at Booth Park um, with the police. It's a run they've done usually at Valentine's Day, but obviously it didn't happen. Um, and now they're allowing runs again. Uh, the state of Connecticut is. So uh, that's run by Marty. I'm sure you guys all know Marty. He runs all the races. Uh, boat ramp stickers, um, waiting for the Waterfront Commission. Apparently they have a meeting next week where they're going to discuss. At this point, we have no boat stickers to give out to anybody. Um, the only ones we have are from 2020. So I believe we got one in the mail that I saw. I don't know, Aileen can probably tell you if we got any other ones, but I'm hoping to hear from the Waterfront Commission in the next couple of weeks on what their plan is. Um, and that's basically it. We're starting to get a lot of rentals for Short Beach and Booth Park. Um, and uh, everybody's taking care of that now. So uh, Aileen and Debbie are handling all that. And then the, as Chad mentioned earlier, this fields, all my field uh, use permits are starting to come in with everybody's requests. Um, so I'm hoping to wrap that up in the next couple of weeks to kind of get everybody's insurance and get everything in house so that we can uh, make sure everybody's where they want to be. And that's it, unless anybody has any questions. Hey, Amy, it's Laura. Hello, Hi, everybody. How are you? Good. So um, we decided that um, the beaches are going to be open to out-of-towners so you can make some money again. Great. That, I, just, I don't know if you heard me. I just was saying that I was planning on charging, so I'm glad we did that. Yeah, great. Bob no, Jekyll, I did you hear you. that, Bob Jekyll? Excellent news. Love to hear it. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Welcome, Amy. Hi, everybody. Hi, Laura. You can turn okay, this. Anybody uh, else have any questions? All right. Thanks, Amy. I guess uh, we'll go on to new business. Any new business? Actually, Chad, I got one question. Is the golf course hiring at all? I haven't seen anything advertised there. Yeah, I just contacted HR yesterday and we put out the posting. So we're going to be looking for some people this year. I have some returning, uh, but we're probably going to be looking to fill a couple positions. Okay, thank you. If there's nothing else, we'll go to old business. And the naming of the uh, press box at Hal Baird is going to happen. It'll be done at the council meeting this coming Monday night. Um, we've invited Bob Baird to come speak. And one question that comes up all the time is, what is the relationship between Hal Baird and Bob Baird? And they are not related. Many people thought they were brothers, but they're not related. And uh, we're going to invite Martha Baird and her family to, you know, attend virtually. And with that, I think. Aileen, we probably can strike that from the agenda for future months, right? Sure. Anybody have any other old business? Wow. If not, it. No. Okay, next meeting will be, aha, April Fool's Day. <laughs> April 1st. And with that, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? Sean Kennedy, are you awake? I am. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Did you say you second? I second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks, Pastor, unanimously. I think uh, April will be a little too chilly yet, but maybe in May we can meet outdoors. Okay.